right, uh, without further ado, let's get our webinar rolling. Good morning. It is with great pleasure and honor to be with you today for our second Four Winds Diversify Project webinar, showcasing our powerful network and partnership with the MBA Advanced Manufacturing Center at the New Mexico Manufacturing Extension Program and also the importance of developing a strong resource network. Before we start, I would like to acknowledge that we have participants here today from New Mexico, Colorado, Arizona, Texas, the Pueblo of Asleta, the Navajo Nation, and Georgia. Welcome all. We hope that you are all healthy, happy, and well in your prospective communities. I would also like to acknowledge that we have Mr. Kevin Davidson with the Hualapai Tribe here with us today, along with representatives from one of our resource partners at Dream Springs, formerly known as Action New Mexico, an alternative lender organization. We also have a lot of great manufacturing companies joining us today, so welcome. The overall mission of our Four Winds Diversify Project webinars are to get you as the contractor ready to prepare and bid and meet with procurement officers, as well as prepare you and your company for government contracting vehicles. Before we move on to the webinar, I'd like to take care of some webinar housekeeping duties. At the bottom of your webinar platform, there is a question and answer dialogue box. Use the Q&A dialog box to ask questions. And at the very end of this presentation, we will read and answer the questions presented to our team. Your feedback is very crucial and important to us. So please fill out the end of the webinar survey, which will be emailed to you directly. And again, thank you all for your participation. Today, I would like to welcome in advance and thank in advance Mr. Javid Haj Vaziri, Project Manager, and Ms. Lucinda Vela, Senior Business Development Specialist at the MBA Advanced Manufacturing Center based out of San Antonio, Texas. I would also like to thank and welcome Ms. Denise Williams Magnahan, Innovation Director for the Northwest New Mexico Manufacturing and Section Partnership Program for joining us for our August 2020 collaborative webinar. First and foremost, we'd like to introduce the Four Winds Diversified Project. Mr. Mike Peacock at Southwest Business Development Consultants gave me this beautiful opportunity at Data Management of New Mexico to operate the Four Winds Diversify project. The purpose of our Four Winds Diversify project is to provide the following resources and services. We are here to provide federal contracting strategies, training and coaching, assessments and certifications for federal set-aside programs such as the SBA's 8A, Hub Zone, Women Owned, Service Disabled Owned, set aside programs, as well as Navajo Nation Certification 1 and Certification 2 programs, provide quarterly small business training, one-on-one -on -one meetings, now virtual, and consultant services. We're also here to provide access to opportunities and access to capital in the forms of lines of credit, small business loans, PPP loan programs, and bonding. We're also here to provide you with access to resources and referrals. Our team here has built a powerful network of over 80 resource partners here in New Mexico, the Southwest and nation. And the beautiful thing about our services that there is, is that there is no cost for our services. First and foremost, I would like to introduce Mr. Michael D. Peacock, President and CEO of Southwest Business Development Consultants. Good morning, Mike. The virtual floor is yours. Good morning, Russell. On behalf of Southwest Business Development Consultants and the Four Winds Diversified Project, 
I'm very proud here to welcome everybody here, uh, our, our staff, our presenters, and I see some clients here today that we welcome you. And uh, we welcome the San Antonio uh, MBDA Manufacturing Center and the New Mexico MEP Project Program. And uh, we are very honored staff here to provide you with the opportunities, the information, the resources to help you and your business and your tribe potentially uh, consider engaging in the manufacturing industry. And uh, we have a great, great uh, presentation today. And again, welcome to, to everyone. And thank you, Russell, for the introduction. I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Mike. Next, we have Ms. Darla M. Jones, who is our program, program manager for the Four Winds Diversified Project. Ms. Jones, the floor is yours. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm the program manager. I have been with uh, MBDA seven years prior, and I had joined Mike and Russell's team um, right at the end of February. And uh, as, if, as you guys know, that's a quite blessing to, uh, to have been joining the team right, right at March um, when everything had happened. So I just want to send a reminder that we had um, a drawing, a $50 gift card for Office Depot for your business. So I have uh, your registration name here and a little bin and we'll have a drawing at the end and uh, you must be present to win. So this is for all the registrations uh, we have received for this webinar. So um, it's kind of like a door prize at a mixer, but a virtual. So thank you, Russell, and thank all of you for uh, joining us this morning. Thank you, Ms. Jones. And lastly, of course, is me. My name is Russell Pedro. I am currently the president and CEO of Data Management of New Mexico and serve as Senior Business Certification and Training Specialist for the Four Winds Diversify Project. I have been very fortunate and honored to work with over 200 plus clientele, small businesses, tribal organizations over the last 17 years through past affiliations with the Minority Business Development Agency, Business Development Center Network, the American Indian Chamber of Commerce of New Mexico, and the American Indian Alaska Native Tourism Association. During that time, our team has been honored to host over 10 minority and Native American economic summits, five meet and greets with our local national laboratories, three one-on-one buyer-seller procurement fairs, and two youth conferences, all focused around assisting our small business and tribal communities. My personal motto is access to capital plus access to opportunities equals job creation and community and economic development. So again, welcome and thank you. I would like to talk about six reasons why strategic partnerships and developing resource partnerships are important. Two heads are better than one. Is a famous quote that we have all heard and nothing couldn't be more truer when it comes to partnerships. Working within a partnership with a genuine win-win intention can give your business the edge it needs to surpass its competitors. Now think of all the resources that you use to ensure a successful and continual growth of your business. They may include suppliers, subcontractors, procurement officers, small business development centers, or a strong network of industry professionals in your area. Now imagine the potential your business could reach if you're able to take advantage of others' business expertise and resources. Growing your customer base can not only save a business from the brink of collapse, but it could take it to a whole new level. So if you're struggling, to capture the interest of a new customer, partnerships could be the answer. And I know recently our team has joined the Arizona Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, the Albuquerque Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, 
at the Nat Chamber of Commerce, American Indian Chamber of Commerce. And there we were able to market and promote our Four Winds Diversify project to a large audience, not only here in New Mexico, but Arizona and the Navajo Nation. So this partnership was very crucial for us. Four, studies have revealed that 27% of executives cite that diversification of their products as the number one goal of strategic partnerships. Access to new or different ideas, materials, and expertise will give your business the opportunity to improve on current products and create new ones. Sometimes growing your business requires expanding into a new market, whether that is geographically or otherwise. And I would like to um, say that we did have a company based out of Atlanta, Georgia, join us in May for a webinar. And since then, they have signed up as a client. And they have reached out to our team here in New Mexico to look and search for partners for various government contracts to include website development and uh, federal procurement. So I see them as a beautiful example, DCJ Global Management Systems, for reaching out to us and expanding their market. A functioning partnership can strengthen the weaker aspects of your business. So you can grow and expand in a way that would have been impossible on your own. Remember that there is strength in numbers and success comes when we work together. A worthwhile partnership is greater than the sum of its parts and together we can reach new heights. So I'd like to give you guys examples and share with you all the different resources and strategic partnerships that our team has developed over the last number of years that we've been in this industry. We work with management and technical assistance organizations such as the National Center for American Indian Enterprise Development, American Indian Procurement and Technical Assistance Center, which has now reestablished a great partnership with the New Mexico MEP program, the Minority Business Development Agency Department of Commerce, SBA. We work with financial institution and alternative lenders such as Dream Spring New Mexico and our local community bank, New Mexico Bank and Trust. We also have great relationships with the American Indian Alaska Native Tourism Association, the UNM Bureau of Business and Economic Research, the American Indian Business Association, Native American and Minority Chambers of Commerce, such as Arizona Hispanic Chamber, the Diné Chamber, Albuquerque Hispano Chamber, state, tribal, and local governments, and business organizations, such as the SBDC Network, and the State of New Mexico Indian Affairs Department. And right in the middle is our Four Winds Diversify Project, and you as clientele, we would like to extend this network to each of you, to each of your organizations and assist you in uh, helping you with your strategic initiatives. Um, right now, I would love to turn over the webinar to Ms. Lucinda Bella with the Minority Business Development Agency, Advanced Manufacturing out of San Antonio, Texas. So Lucinda, without further ado, welcome and thank you. Thank you, Russell. Um, good morning. I'm um, waiting to see if I can get the controls here, though, Russell, for moving it forward. Okay. I'll move you forward for now, but I will. Thank you. Good morning. My name again is Lucinda Vela. I'm a senior business development specialist with the San Antonio Minority Business Development Agency for the Advanced Manufacturing Center. The San Antonio MBDA is a federally funded program that is operated by the UTSA Institute for Economic Development. We thank Four Winds Diversified Project for the opportunity to have us share information with you on how you can benefit as a client of the San Antonio MBDA AMC. Also with us today is the project manager for the MBDA, who Ru Russell had previously introduced, and he is project manager over the Advanced Manu uh, Manufacturing Center in San Antonio, Javid Hajbaziri. Javid, would you like to say a few introductory words? 
Yes, uh, good morning everyone and thank you Russell and team for hosting this webinar. My name is Javid Hajbaziri and I'm the project manager of the MBVA Advanced Manufacturing Center operated by the University of Texas at San Antonio. We serve ethnic minority-owned businesses all around the country with a focus on the Southwest region. On behalf of the San Antonio MBVA Business Centers, I would like to welcome you all to this session. Lucinda will introduce you to our center and services. Thanks, Lucinda. Thank you, and I'm gonna ask for Russell's help again. I can't see the arrows at the bottom. Let if me, you can put me on the right page again, I think as long as I click towards the bottom, I'll be good. No problem, Lucinda. Okay, I'll, I'll let you move this forward. Shortly, here you go. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right, so let me start by telling you a little bit more about us. Um, as an agency of the United States Department of Commerce, we work on behalf of the minority-owned firms in the United States with the following vision and mission. Our vision is economic prosperity for all U.S. business enterprises. Our mission is to promote the growth of minority businesses through the promotion of mobilization and advancement of public and private sector programs, policy, and research. Let me see if I can get it to move forward. There we go, thanks. The MBDA, our clients um, with MBDA are growing businesses that represent a diverse group of minorities. Now our goal is to work with businesses that have an annual average income of 1 million annually since our focus is to assist established minority businesses that are ready for growth. We want to help businesses that are ready to reach that next level of growth in their business. There's a huge potential for the economic contribution from minority owned businesses with 8 million minority businesses already contributing $1.4 trillion to the US economy. They have been responsible for creating millions of jobs and represent 29% of all firms in the United States. So we want to help you all to grow these statistics together. Oops. Back again, sorry. <clears throat> Russell, I'm going to have you get me back on that page. I cannot see the arrows, so sorry. Sorry, everyone. Okay, let's look at the MBDA networks. Operated by universities, economic development centers, and nonprofits, there are 32 MBDA business centers located throughout the US. Now, some of these MBDA organizations have expanded their services into specialty areas, such as export and advanced manufacturing. This has resulted in the addition of uh, many extension centers throughout the, the US. For us at UTSA, we are the only operator of, the, of three MBDA centers. So we have a business center, which is for service oriented industries, and we've been serving businesses for nearly 35 years. We also have an export center, which will focus on Latin America. And we also, of course, have our advanced manufacturing center, and this is for the manufacturing industry. Our services. We have provided procurement. I'm sorry, I'm getting lost again in this. Can you put me back one more, Russell? I apologize, everyone. There's the network okay. and then the services. Yes. Yeah, let's look. There you go. We had gone forward too, too much there. So um, the San Antonio Minority Business Development Center offices uh, offer services that help grow your business, including access to contracts, access to capital, and access to business consulting. I wanted to look first at uh, uh, what we offer as far as contracts. So we help minority businesses with access to contracts. There are opportunities at the federal, state, and local levels. Subcontracting is one of them. Uh, we work with strategic partners within the MBDA network for this. Government contracting. We assist uh, with government contracts through the General Services Administration uh, schedule. Some of y'all will already know that as GSA. And we also do uh, market research that's available to you so that we can help you find public and private sectors to do contracts with. Russ, I'm going to let you move it forward. How's that? 
no problem. Thank you. All right. Also part of our services that help with contracts is business to business networking. Uh, now, business to business has not gone away, but as you know, uh, there are uh, still virtual opportunities. So we want you all to keep taking advantage of that. And of course, digital introductions. So as part of our access to contract services and providing business to business opportunities, we offer events, seminars, webinars, training, certification workshops, resources that are through MBDA, UTSA, and additional organizational affiliates uh, through federal, state, and local organizations. And like I said, as you all know, everything's virtual right now, but doesn't stop us, we all keep going. If you can go to the next slide. Okay, uh, one thing before I start on this, we also have strategic partnerships to mention that to you all. And uh, what I want to say about that is that means we try to match uh, like-minded clients together that can assist each other and can do procurement uh, projects together. Uh, so just to let you know, there's a lot of opportunities there. We have one of our clients currently working with um, probably about four to five different uh, uh, MBDA clients as well, and they're able to uh, conduct business that way. So we're very excited about that. Let's look at the uh, supplier diversity program. Supplier diversity programs are uh, focused for subcontracting opportunities. So the program is a proactive business program which encourages the use of minority owned suppliers. So we work with large prime contractors and these are the folks that work directly with the government and also OEMs which are the original equipment manufacturers. Uh, we work with them to develop programs for businesses like yours so that you can take advantage of those opportunities. Again, we want to help you with these type of subcontracting opportunities. All right. We also offer a wide range of certification and training. And we mentioned this a little bit uh, before under business to business. Uh, whether it's uh, a socioeconomic program uh, that's, that's offering an opportunity or the process management training and certifications uh, that cover possibly Six Sigma for you, lean manufacturing and ISO certification. We have the resources. We will provide you uh, wherever those programs are being offered. For us, uh, we have the UTSA extended education group on campus, but we will also help you look at other community, state and federal resources. So we're gonna work with you to accomplish this type of training that you need and needed certifications to continue to advance your business. Access to capital, extremely important one right now these days. Uh, we assist minority businesses with the needed capital to grow, whether it's for equipment, buildings, employee expansion, or as we know lately, uh, some of the disaster recovery relief that's needed. We're going to assist you with your capital needs within your business development plans. Um, so there's conventional and alternative lending. Uh, most recently, as you know, uh, COVID has uh, provided us with um, some challenges. So um, SBA and the government uh, have been providing paycheck protection plans and the economic injury disaster loans and grants. So I hope some of you have been able to take advantage of those. Um, we're also going to provide you with assistance in business credit scores and uh, help you to look for options for lines of credit. And the last thing, uh, something that some of you may not know about, you, you might, but is tax credit co uh, consulting that we offer, which can affect your bottom line for increased profitability for your business. Okay. Our strategic business consulting. We want to help businesses like yours to develop a sound roadmap for growth. So we, we provide several different types of consulting. Uh, they cover everything from the initial client assessment, organization diagnosis, strategic planning, marketing plans, financial planning, and master budgeting. Those are some of the business um, consulting services that we offer. We can go to the next slide. Included with this business consulting um, is a way to assist you with targeted plans for your business. So we're going to provide you with a variety of reports and analysis in the areas of markets for procurement and contracts, 
So we're going to assist in identifying and assessing potential target markets for your business specifically, and also for financial and cash flow management. We will offer a comprehensive view of your company's performance and the potential for profitability. All right. In closing, uh, as Russell had said, is very important is to really look at the strategic partners that are available through getting to know uh, Four Winds, getting to know MBDA, MEP. Uh, so we want to make sure that you realize uh, the resources don't end with just our own organizations. There's, there's a, along with the network of the prime contractors and OEMs, our partners are within the UTSA Institute of Economic Development and through additional regional MBDAs in the U.S. The MBDA Center, uh, along with the support in advanced manufacturing, covers business needs in the service industry and export in Latin America, as I had mentioned earlier in the presentation. And we also work, uh, as mentioned, with other regional centers uh, to collaborate on clients. So there might be clients from all over the United States, and we may be collaborating with other MBDA regions. Uh, so keep that in mind. Under UTSA's Institute for Economic Development, there are several resources, including CAMELS, which is the Center for Advanced Manufacturing and Lean Systems. And they offer tech assistance for process improvement, very important. And then the Small Dis uh, Business Development Center, we have PTAC for procurement tech assistance, and then Technical Commercialization Center, as well as the Southwest Trade Adjustment Assistance Centers. And we can help put you all in contact with any of these uh, supporting organizations. Um, we also continue, uh, obviously, with the Manufacturing Extension Partnership, uh, their regional centers, and of course, um, happy to be working with um, also Four Winds Diversified Project. Uh, I want to thank you all again for the opportunity. Russell, thank you so much. And uh, I want to make sure that you all have our contact information below uh, the partners, strategic partners. Please feel free to contact me, give me a call. And if you have any questions, uh, we will be able to answer those questions for you and also let you know about additional resources. So thank you again, appreciate the time. Well, we appreciate you, Lucinda, as well as Javid and Westus Hubbard for all of your hard work and dedication assist in our small businesses and minority-owned companies. Um, with that, I would like to now turn over the webinar over to Denise Williams with the Manufacturing Extension Partnership Program based out of the Northwest here in New Mexico. <clears throat> Ms. Denise Williams. You want to run the slides, Russell? Or do you want, you want to, I practiced yesterday, but that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Either. Yeah, it's not as easy as it looks, right? <laughs> no, it's not. I practiced yesterday and people were making fun of me. So yeah, I was like, oh, please, Russell. <laughs> I appreciate everybody's patience, by the way. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you all for being here today. I'm Denise Williams and I'm with New Mexico Manufacturing Extension Partnership, often called MEP. Um, there's some type of MEP throughout the United States and uh, we work directly with manufacturers. Next slide. Um, our purpose is to help manufacturers become profitable. And we do this um, through various um, services. Uh, next. Uh, technical assistance, that comes from the New Mexico State Universities and the two national labs that we have in New Mexico, Sandia National Labs and Los Alamos National Labs. Um, training is what um, MEP does. I think our training is a little unique or our workshops are because we have the lecture part and then it becomes a labs or hands-on so people can start to experiment without messing up their own equipment or their own workflow with that. And then assessments is what innovation directors are usually in the business and helping with the daily challenge or something that they want changed. Next slide. Um, this is the national information from MEP. And every dollar that the federal government puts into our system in manufacturing, we get $13.40 return, which is a great uh, return on our federal dollars. Next. These are our federal partners, the National Institute of Standard and Te Technology. They're an oversight 
um, to make sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to, meet auditing, things of that nature with that. Then we have the NSBA, which is the New Mexico Small Business Administration. Um, MEP is part of that, the national labs and the universities. We all share the same bucket of money, but we each have a piece of, of the pie, shall we say, and we all work together to make sure that we're helping our manufacturers. Uh, the U.S. Department of Commerce, they're another oversight, and we have to match money that we um, receive from them. And the U.S. Department of Energy, um, Kirtland Air Force Base, works with us and our manufacturers on a lot of um, technology and commercialization. Next. And this is exciting. This is Manufacturing Day. It comes up all of October. Um, we're doing it virtually and you can see some of our partners with us, Lucinda and Russell's group are with us. And these are just local partners that come together and work on various things. Next. Um, our partnerships are unique on whatever another organization needs or how we might fit. Um, we're very specific on what we do, but we only do one thing, so we need uh, lots of partners. Uh, shared training space. In Albuquerque, our main office, we do have a training room, uh, but sometimes a uh, training room isn't uh, put together. The other thing that we're learning through the virtual world is that we need a little bit more soft skills, and MEP is really good at hard skills. You know, this is the workflow, this is how the machine operates, this is what the material should look like, and moving through that. But sometimes we need that little softer skill. So I've been able to do some joint classes virtually, which um, has created a little different group of people and, and some fun instead of just, here's the facts. Um, we share exhibit tables. Uh, I'm on a panel today with you guys, so thanks for that. I've already talked about Manufacturing Day. Uh, put logos out there. Sometimes somebody will recognize a certain logo but won't recognize MEPs and that, that can start to create a relationship. Um, as Lucinda mentioned, there's been a lot of grants out there, so MEP as well as other organizations have been working on that to make sure that our uh, businesses can stay in business. Uh, we do a lot of committee work. Uh, we just finished all our hosting of virtual lab time so that a client can have one-on-one -on -one time with a scientist, mathematician, or an engineer um, on something that they're thinking about or, or just um, a conversation to see if something could be resolved with that. A couple of years ago, we did a lot of legislation calls. Uh, our clients did that. So just hearing what they, what they, was a fun learning experience and they were willing to make the calls. So that worked out really well. Uh, we're here to make an economic impact to New Mexico and to the U.S. And we're always open to other ways of partnering. So if you have a suggestion, please let me know. Next. Um, this is our product of services. Uh, we do exporting and ISO uh, with that, um, mostly helping you fill out the paperwork and getting that through the process. Uh, the Green Enterprise Program, um, that's just trying to help you save some money. And I really enjoy the Green 101 workshop. We make windmills out of paper and eventually we get them to automation and just the difference in the time saving and the product improvement. Um, energy management, we work with New Mexico State University on that. Um, they use their master and PhD students to um, help with trying to reduce your energy. Um, sometimes it's just changing the filter more often. Little things that businesses don't always have time to figure out. And then assessment and planning, that's the kind of work that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Technology transfer and commercialization, we're really lucky in New Mexico that we have the two labs is that they create things and uh, it needs to go to market. And there is a company, an Aztec, that took a, they created a graph, uh, graffiti removing equipment and they bought it and it has become one of their main staying projects. And they were a machine shop, but they could produce it and their customers needed it. Next. Um, to work with MAP, of course, we have qualifications called paperwork. Some people say it's the emission process. Um, we work with small businesses under 500 using the Small Business Administration guidelines. Um, you'll need a New Mexico tax identification number. You need to be in business for profit. And these are things that MEP needs is we need a NIST code and, and we help you get that at no charge. 
and it's Duns and Bradstreet. And that's just helping with our um, auditing and documentation that we didn't make you up, keeping us all more on the honest side. Um, our funding is all drawdown and um, it is shared among the universities and the labs and MEP. Um, so none of it's in cash, but it does provide you some really great services. Next. Um, this is what any MEP does. And I kind of went through some of those, but I think it's more important to hear what our clients say about us. Next. Navajo Spirit is a Native American clothing company and they're located in Grants, I'm sorry, Gallup, New Mexico. Boy, that'd be. Anyway, um, they weren't able to be here today. Virginia Ballinger is a politician for the White Rock Reservation area for the church, um, for the chapter house there. So she's doing that and her husband is the general manager, Carl, and somebody has to be at the, at the shop. Anyway, um, Carl really likes technology and he really likes Apple products. So we have been working on getting as much stuff automated as possible. One of the cool things that, that Carl did with, with some of his um, friends that are into solar and green is to take a cleaner's rack that spins around and move it in to make inventory now. And it's all color coded, numbered. You can look at your iPad and find the product or the, the raw material to start with that. Um, they are digitalizing all their patterns and creating standard patterns, uh, small, medium, large, extra large, double, two X and three X are not quite the same, but because they do international sales, we spend a lot of time trying to find the, the size that would work no matter what country you were in. Um, they've seen an 80% increase in profit just by, by working with MEP. It's coming up on 13 years in October. So it is a slow process. Uh, a lot of things are real quick, and, but the long-term money saving and making take a lot longer. Um, Jack's Plastic Welding makes plastic products. Um, they're located in Aztec, New Mexico. They've also been with us 13 years. And um, one of the things that they always say about us is that when I first met them, they only worked with outdoors, which is now getting popular in New Mexico and the Southwest again. Uh, but we were able to find them other customers that could use their products. Defense was one, medical, um, they got into exporting, and here we are in the oil and gas country, and they were not working with oil and gas, and they came up with this spill containment for them. Um, energy, you know, when something's not in use, how does it need to be protected? And they do a lot of safety uh, products. One of them is the Annie's lungs that are inside the CPR. Um, dummies, probably not the most appropriate word. Anyway, and then one of the ones that's a new client is Silent Heart Hawk Environmental, and they're also in Gallup. And when I first met them, uh, coming up on two years, they were doing cleanup, land cleanup, water cleanup. They have a lab for testing. And as soon as COVID hit, they, Nama Joe was on the phone saying, who do you know in medical? Where can I get PPE? I need to be talking to me. Anyway, she is just an amazing person. And she started talking to these different people that were in manufacturing. And now she is a PPE, uh, it's personal protective equipment for, um, hospitals, uh, medical facilities, the school system, and manufacturers. Just within a short period of time, when you think about March to where we are in August with that. And the other thing is she is working with a Farmington company who is a medical supply, and he is helping her get set up in the Gallup area so she can now have a storefront. And she just is, I mean, she gives us a lot of credit, but it's really her. So those are just a couple of examples of people that have worked with us for a while. Next, Russell. Anyway, I hope that we can get into a conversation. Here's my contact information, Denise. And the main office, Linda, she's our office manager. Um, she'll be glad to take calls too and kind of filter them out to the uh, appropriate innovation director. Thank you, guys. Excellent, and thank you very much, Denise for all those beautiful examples um, and current individuals and companies that you work with. 
And again, thank you, Lucinda and Javid, for all your expertise. Um, I'd like to go over a quick review. Of course, the six reasons why it is important to develop st strategic partnerships or resource partnerships is that they give your business a competitive edge. Partnerships also give your business access to additional resources. They can grow your customer base. They can also give your business access to new products and services. They can help you reach a new market. And partnerships and resource development can also strengthen the weaker aspects of your business. And these are a few more items that we discussed today. Of course, access to contracts, B2B networking, certifications and training assistance, access to capital, supplier diversity programs, strategic business consultant, Mexico SBA programs, workshops in manufacturing, access to national laboratories and universities, and of course, showcasing your success stories through national award recognitions. At this point in time, I would like to, first of all, thank each and every one of you for your participation. And then I would also like to open the floor to questions. So whether you have a question on the Q&A dialog box, or if you would like to ask a question um, live, we are more than happy to um, take your questions now. Let's see. We didn't talk about startups. We talked about existing businesses, so I'm not sure how our services might fit into that. Well, um, this is Lucinda. Um, so startups, um, or I think people who are doing their startup businesses, the Small Business Development Center um, is, is that resource that um, many times when we get uh, wonderful clients or clients that are just starting out, we'll also uh, offer them as that resource uh, because they do work with startup companies and, uh, you know, from business plan all the way through as well. So um, anyway, just as a, as a sidebar, they would be a good uh, center to go to. Stephanie, did you want to kind of add what you're doing? Can you hear me? Uh -huh. Okay, I was just checking to see if you can hear me. Hi, I'm Steffi Rawlings. Um, I'm running a new center for New Mexico Small Business Development Center, and it is called uh, Technology Commercialization Accelerator, and it's here in New Mexico Tech in Socorro, New Mexico. Um, what we offer is um, no cost counseling regarding intellectual property. So we have been uh, receiving referrals from the development centers where we have uh, new entrepreneurs coming up with their new ideas and we are providing them resources um, to move forward with their idea and also uh, how to protect their idea. Um, and that deals with copyrights, trademarks, and um, patents. So um, we started during the pandemic. So we uh, provide uh, webinars and uh, we provide our counseling via Zoom. So uh, if you do have any clients, New Mexico residents that have questions regarding their intellectual property, uh, please forward them on to me. Um, my website is coming up this week, so I'm excited. And we'll have it posted on uh, the New Mexico Small Business Development Center locations there. So um, I can be reached at 575, uh, my phone's new, so it's 575-517-6912. And so we are the New Mexico Small Business Development Center Technology Commercialization Accelerator here in Socorro, New Mexico. So thank you, Denise. 
And thank you, Estefanita, for um, joining us today. I would definitely like to um, talk to you after this webinar to learn more about your organization and how we can partner. Well, thank you, Steffi, for joining us today. Well, I'd like to thank now for for additional questions um, for any of our attendees and participants. The floor is open. I've got the question here. Yes, sir. Um, who would, whom can I be directed to to find some funding uh, on a reservation? I want to put up a large building uh, for a welding shop and precast manufacturing concrete, which we are currently doing. So I could use some help there. Thank you for that question. Uh, Mr. Matthew Lucero, he is currently the president and CEO of Chemo Constructors based out of Esleta Pueblo. I do know, I definitely want to um, get you in contact with Javid and Lucinda as well as Denise, but Javid, if you have any um, anything to say, Lucinda or Denise. Yes, I can take this question. Uh, you can sign up with the San Antonio MBDA Advanced Manufacturing Center and we will introduce you to the subject matter expert in financing. We will walk you through the whole process to understand the available financing for all kinds of investment, including what you mentioned, and the available resources, affordable resources, and the eligibility criteria, then they can walk you through the whole process in order to apply for the right loan or credit line. All again. What, what was the um, program called again? The San Antonio MBDA Advanced Manufacturing Center. You can send an email to Linda and Lucinda will register you with the system and introduce you to the point of contact. And um, for everybody that has attended this um, webinar, um, you each will be receiving an email by tomorrow about this time with all of our contact information for Javid, Lucinda, Denise, myself, Mike, and Darla. But at the same time, I would also like to, um, you know, of course, follow up with you, Javid, with Matthew Lucero, to get, um, you know, things rolling. But I appreciate that question. Matthew, this is Denise, and um, I worked with the Azaleto Pueblo, so I got to dig through my database to find out some of the um, consultants and, and names they may have changed, but they can at least kind of help you uh, lay the groundwork for that. So I will get that information over to Russell. And I'll find out how organized my uh, project was when I'm providing you that. Very good. But they are used to having various businesses. I have to say that they were really easy to, to get the structures up. Uh, you know, what they said they would do, they would do. And um, it took, it took a lot of people, so you're going to have to find some great people for your team. That's my advice. <laughs> uh, Matthew, this is Michael Peacock. Uh, great to have you here online. Um, what are, one of the challenges that we see in Indian country is it's, of course, it's federal trust property. It's foreign land. It's very difficult to find financing for this type of project. And I'm aware of a program through the U.S. Department of, of uh, Interior, the Bureau of Indian Affairs, they have a guaranteed loan program and they will guarantee up to 90% of the project um, according to the risk of the project. And they, the BIA works with certified local lenders to fund the project. Uh, the problem with that is there's uh, not a whole lot of funding available and the appropriation is very small and there's a huge run on by tribes to obtain this funding. Uh, I think we have Hal Hansen online here. Is Hal here? Hal is a new client of our 
Hi, Hal. Is Hal here? Uh, yes, I'm here. Yes, Hal. We, uh, Hal's a new client of our Four Winds Diversify project. He came on as a client about a week ago. We had a Zoom meeting with Hal. Hal is an investor. He's looking for projects in Indian country. And Hal, is this something you might be interested in financing? We certainly can take a look at it. Uh, it I think you've described, though, some of the problems that you've got with it. For us, it's, it we don't really care about that. We're just looking at what we can do to help and what in uh, what it will do to help the the people. Uh, we do need to get a return on the money because we're not philanthropists. You know, we don't just give it away. But I'd be happy to take a look at it if you can put any details together. Sure. Okay, great. Matthew, do you, do you have a, a white paper or maybe a business plan on your project that you can share with uh, with Hal? Yes, I can easily come up with one. Great, and I can help you do it if you if you need some help. Okay. I, I have another question for our, our panel, uh, San Antonio and uh, New Mexico MEP. What what is the cost for your services, and how how would you approach this project? Javi, would you like to answer that? Yes, of course. Um, our referral services, including referral to contracting or subcontracting opportunities and referral to financing, either traditional or alternative financing, all are from no cost for the clients. We also provide fee-based services for time-consuming type of uh, research or consulting, such as registering a client with the GSA schedule, which is a time-consuming project to usually take between six months to one year. We also provide uh, deep market research analysis, trend analysis, industry analysis, but however, even our fee-based services costs penny on dollar comparing to what usually companies pay to benefit from these services. And New Mexico Manufacturing Extension Partnership, if you're a business in New Mexico and you are, have a New Mexico tax ID number, we work with you to um, draw down the NMSBA um, to set up probably a value stream mapping that would support what Hal, Hal is asking for, but trying to put some details around that so you can visually see your process um, and then get that into a document. So it sounds like working with Hal is, is one way and then working with um, Havid and Lucinda and then MEP, depending on you know where you're at. There's, you can never have too many people on your time, Matthew, on your team, Matthew, so. <clears throat> Would any of you work with uh, Hal and Matthew in developing some kind of a teaming agreement or joint venture uh, entity? Is that something you guys do, each program? Um, Javid speaking uh, from the San Antonio MBDA center's point of view, merger and acquisition or teaming agreement is a type of service we provide, but we don't provide technical assistance to in preparing the contract or the legal point of view. We just find the right partners in order to introduce each other and help them finalize the negotiation process. And if they need any support, we usually refer them to the third party service providers, either in the MBA network or the other centers to provide more technical assistance. Beautiful. Uh all MAP has is uh, we agree on confidentiality and anytime that we, like the three clients I talked about today, 
um, I have written approval to talk about them and they approve the slide uh, for that. Uh, we set on lots of teams and committees and things and our goal is to support the business. So however that works out. So we don't have anything real official. We do have MOUs with various um, agencies and organizations, but not an individual business. So I have another question here. Uh, Matthew and my firm were past graduates of the 8A certification program through the SBA. Oh, okay. And my question to either one of you is, do you, can you help identify a partner within your region that may be 8A certified um, or possesses maybe a service disabled certification that we can identify that may want to team up with Matthew and partner and, and really get his product potentially into the federal government markets with this 8A certification. Um, I'm a firm believer in forming teaming and joint venture partnerships to really grow the business to scale. And that's the problem we, we really have in minority and Indian countries is getting our companies from point A to point B. And so we're, we're utilizing the strategy to really, really help our clients. So we need your help to find, you know, partners that have these capabilities and certifications to, to really build to scale. So is that something you can help Matthew with? Uh, again, Javid is speaking, a good question. Uh, this is what we do as part of our B2B networking services based on the NAICS code. We can introduce our clients to other minority businesses, not only in Texas, but all around the country. Either if they want to find a company who is an 8A uh, company, if they look for a mentor protege kind of collaboration, if they want a company who has a GSA schedule and want to subcontract with them in order to sell to the government, all of these uh, B2B business to business matchmaking services, we can provide our client with. Um, I just got a, a uh, uh, chat uh, from Miss Aleph Marquez. Another option for funding is through the MexicoFinance.com programs for small business. So I'll go ahead and copy that link and send it to everybody as well, that there's another option for funding. Um, I also did see Denise um, about startup services. I know we briefly talked about it, but we also work with the National Center for American Indian Enterprise Development and American Indian Technical Assistance Centers, along with um, the Small Business Development Center Network for Startup Services. Hey, Russell, just, uh, something just occurred in my mind here. Uh, I don't know if Matthew's located in, in a opportunity zone area. Hmm. Good point. Now, yes, I am. I'm if, if Matt's located in a opportunity zone area, then it's really a great tool for attracting investor capital. Very true. So that's something that, yeah, there's something that we can explore with Matthew to find out if his, if it, his business is located in a uh, opportunity zone area. There, there, this is Lucinda. Um, there, there also may be some opportunities for tax credits related to that. Um, so that's always helpful too for moving forward and getting profitability on the other end. So that's something you all may want to look at or, or again, I'm happy to look at that for you too if you all have a question on that directly related to Matthew. So let me know. Excellent. Beautiful. Um, <clears throat> Does anybody else have any questions? The floor is yours if you have any other questions. Any additional comments from our panel? If not, I would like to again to thank each and every one of you for your participation 
Thank you to San Antonio as well as New Mexico MEP for all their um, knowledge. And thank you to all the attendees. As mentioned, we will be emailing you a follow-up um, questionnaire and survey. And again, your feedback is important. And we will also be um, emailing you, each of you, our contact information for all of our panelists. Um, with that, again, thank you. Have a great day. We have all oh, of Hold on, Russell. I want to do the drawing really quick. Oh, yeah, yeah. Drawing, drawing, yes. All righty. Looks like everyone's still on. <clears throat> okay, so I put them on up in here. Sleeves <laughs> rolled up. And this is for the $50 Office Depot gift card. Okay. And the winner is Hey, look at that. Matthew Lucero. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matthew, and uh, can go ahead and uh, mail that to your 3681? Yes. All right, congratulations, and thank you guys for participating. Thank you, thank you so much thank for you. including us over here from uh, San Antonio. Appreciate it, and look forward to hearing from some of y'all, definitely. Thank Thanks. you all. Thanks. Have a good afternoon. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Russell. Bye. Thanks, Thanks Russell. Russell. Carla? Thank you, Javid. Thank you, Lucinda. Javid and Lucinda. Thank you. Thank you.